All right, welcome to Training Tuesday offered by the Chief Procurement Office for General Services. Today we are going to cover the updates and reminders. We're going to talk about fiscal year in bid buy. We're going to go over late execution waivers. We'll tell you where you can find some additional bid buy training and other procurement related training. And we'll end with our spotlight Illinois for today. All right, updates and reminders. We currently have 17 calendar days, but only 13 business days until the last business day of the fiscal year 24. So just a final reminder, or not final, sorry, you're going to keep hearing it. Uh, a reminder that the fiscal year end falls on a Friday. That's the last business day falls on a Friday, June 28th. The Domestic Products Act Compliance Report uh, was referenced in CPO Notice 2024.14. We went over that last week on Training Tuesday. Those reports are due to your SPO by July 1st. The end of fiscal sole source hearings, uh, there's only a few left that you can still publish for. Those are for Wednesday, June the 26th. Those, if you're trying to achieve being on that hearing, you must have it published by June 12th. If you're trying to be on the Thursday, June 27th hearing, that would need to be published by June 13th. Please note that if a sole source hearing is requested, that is going to potentially delay that response and that final determination from the CPO. So please make sure that you're getting those on there, that your sole sources are very clearly articulated as to why it is a sole source or a sole economically feasible source. Um, and again, be prepared that if there is a hearing, you will need to be in attendance and able to represent why, again, it is a sole source or sole economically feasible. Those after the hearing do require the sole source hearing officer to uh, write a recommendation and present that to the CPO. And then the CPO reviews all information and makes that final determination on the sole source justification form part two. So again, that process does take a little bit more time than if the hearing is canceled. All right, I also wanna let you guys know that we have a new training opportunity coming soon. I can't wait to tell you more about it. What I can tell you is though, we've already achieved a UPPCC uh, accreditation for it. So you're going to be able to take that new course and receive credit for it. All right, let's jump into our topics for today. Fiscal year in bid buy. So just as a reminder of how your bid buy string of information is set up, first we have the document um, number, which is the fiscal year, then the organization ID, the department ID, the document letter, and then the record number. So how is that fiscal year determined? Well, at the requisition, you select the fiscal year, which is gonna become the first identifier in that bid by document numbering. The bid by document numbering cannot be changed after it's selected in the requisition. At PO, the agency will be able to update the fiscal year of obligation on the general tab. This will not change your bid by document numbering though. If you have any questions uh, in regards to that, you can ask your APO or your SPO for further clarification. Um, however, I will say that if you are starting a requisition right now, knowing that it's gonna be for fiscal year 25, go ahead and select that fiscal year 25. If you're doing potentially like a small purchase and you really are hoping that it is completed and, and think that it's going to be completed in fiscal year 24, you can go ahead and select that fiscal year 24 still. If it rolls over to fiscal year 25, you do not have to restart the process in bid buy. Late execution waivers. So this is a really important topic. Let's dive into it. So what happens when goods or services or goods have been received prior to execution of the contract? The first step is to alert your SPO and your APO. You're going to need to obtain approval to execute the contract and execute the contract as quickly as possible. The agency will then fill out and submit the late execution waiver attestation of facts and the LEW approval CPO version to the SPO. 
So let's go into this a little bit more with CPO Notice 2020.04. This CPO Notice requires um, the late execution to be submitted electronically. And that whole packet has to consist of the late execution waiver request, the late execution attestation of facts, and the executed contract in all required attachments. In addition to that CPO notice, we also have CPO notice 2023.02, which updated one of the forms, which is the LEW approval CPO version. Let's look at all those forms and, and what they're talking about. So the agency must have all the text boxes completed in full to provide the pertinent details regarding the contract, the agency, and the vendor information. The waiver then states, I approve an exception to the requirements of 30 ILCS 520-80D for the obligation referenced above. The contract could not be reduced to writing and signed by all necessary parties prior to the goods being received or prior to the services being commenced because, and then it leaves a text box for the agency to complete. Per CPO Notice 2020.04, the agency shall write here, see attached. On the LAW attestation of facts, this also must be completed in full. Assure detailed responses are provided. The attestation must be made by the APO or the CFO. The attestation must be signed by the APO or the CFO. So as a reminder to CPO notice 2020.04, the agency must submit a full packet for the SPO for review. The packet must include the late execution waiver approval form, the APO or CFO signed LEW attestation of facts, and the executed contract with all contract attachments. Please recall that U plans, financial disclosures, and all other documents referenced in the contract must be submitted as part of that contract. So let's do a quick review for the late execution waiver. When would a late execution waiver be required? Well, they're required when work started prior to the contract execution. This is the only exception to this would be for an emergency procurement. The contract must still be approved in bid by by the SPO prior to contract execution by the agency. Executing prior to SPO written approval would violate section 10-10 of the procurement code. After the contract is executed, the full packet signed by the APO or CFO must be submitted to the SPO. It's also highly important that you complete this process as soon as possible following the contract execution. Uh, the longer that you wait or toll on this, um, or the longer you wait even to get that contract executed, you're going to have more time that you're going to have to justify or detail out what was occurring to uh, delay the execution of that contract. All right, so where can you find some additional training? Uh, we hope, first of all, that you found this training Tuesday to be helpful and useful. Uh, if you need some additional training, you can always find that in our CPOGS Training Center. All of our training Tuesdays are recorded and put onto that site. Uh, so we seem to also be having a lot of confusion in regards to the training that is required for bid by access. On the bid by registration form, it appropriately refers to CPO notice 2024.04. This notice requires the requesting user to have completed the diversity and inclusion in procurement training prior to being able to gain access. This training can be completed at any time due to the on-demand offering. In order to access the training online, please follow the directions here or refer to CPO Notice 2024.04. This is on the OneNet platform, which is the same platform that agency personnel use to complete their annual ethics training and many other trainings. 
our introduction to Illinois procurement. Uh, this is an instructor led course and will be offered again on Wednesday, August 7th. This course is intended for state of Illinois procurement employees that have not previously taken the course. You must register to attend. Each person wishing to attend must register using the link. If you have registered, do not share or forward your WebEx confirmation with login instructions. You must be on time and not leave prior to the conclusion of this course. Each attendee is responsible for logging in on their own device. If you are not logged in following these directions, you will not receive credit for attending. Our next bid by monthly training will be held on June 12th. Tomorrow, uh, you do not have to register to attend. You don't have to attend the whole day either. So come um, view any portion of the training that is applicable or what you're needing um, assistance on. Our bid by practice session is going to be held on Thursday, June 13th. We don't have a set agenda for this course or for this training. This is if you have taken the bid by practice or the monthly course and have some additional questions, you can use that as an opportunity to bring those and we can walk through those in that training environment. All right, I'm gonna hand it over to LaTanya. Tell us all about Marshall. Good morning. Um, today's spotlight brings us to Marshall, Illinois, with a population of just under 4,000 people. Some key people from Marshall include James Ramon Jones, who published his first novel, From Here to Eternity, which centered on World War II exploits. It was later adapted to a movie and subsequently a television series. Everett Edward Carpenter Jr is our second person and he grew up his early years in Marshall and is an American auto racing driver currently competing in the IndyCar series. Draws to Marshall include Lincoln Trail State Park. And our interesting fact is that Marshall is home of the world's largest wooden gavel, which is certified by the Guinness Book of World Records, which sits outside his courthouse. This gavel is three feet in diameter, five feet in height, and 16 and a half feet in length. That concludes our spotlight on Marshall. Thank you so much, LaTanya. All right, if you have any questions uh, stemming from today, you can email those to cpogs.training at illinois.gov. If you have procurement specific uh, questions, we do encourage you to take those to your APO or your SPO. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.